been a minute. <laughs> it has been a minute since you've been here. <laughs> Sam, what are we doing today? We, I didn't even tell you what we're doing today, <laughs> really. You just said get in the car. Get in the vehicle. <laughs> Guys, we are at Falcon Lake. We're with Ian from Philoma Marina. And if you remember last year, we did some fish tagging with him. Sam and I and Ian, we caught some bass and uh, tagged them for the contest. And we are back on the water. Fishing season is closed currently, but there are some people fishing, but they're allowed to be fishing. They're fishing with nets. And just behind us here in the back of the creek, there's some fisheries biologists. I'm not even sure what they're all doing, but they're doing some cool studies on walleye. They're taking some eggs. We're gonna learn all about it today. And as well, we are gonna watch them take a couple more fish for Ian's contest. And hopefully you can learn a little bit about the walleye spawn and maybe this will help you catch more fish. So here we go. Give me your head. <laughs> I, can't, I can't see my feet with a mask on. <laughs> well, here we go. They're not too, it's not too long of a boat ride. Put this baby on plane. This is my first boat ride of the season. Nice. How's it going guys? I'm Jay. Hey Jay. This is my wife Sam. And you might know Ian, maybe not. He's new around here. So what, what's going on right now, Trevor? Uh, we're just uh, spawning some walleye. We're trying to reach our trying to reach our goal of 13 million at the hatchery, and we're sitting at about eight and a half million eggs right now. Wow! So these eggs will be used to be stocking lakes all over Manitoba. You bet. Well, for the most part, mostly kind of this area. There's another hatchery up at the Swan Creek that is also doing the same program. And what's what's the basic net? Obviously, there's a lot of ropes and a lot of lines around us. What what exactly is going on here? Well, the net is basically got what is called two leads which is funneling all the fish that are swimming up the river into that net, which is kind of like a large minnow trap. So it's got a, basically a big funnel into the middle of the net. And the fish generally try to swim to the outside to escape so they don't go back down the tunnel and out. So we capture them all overnight. Very cool. So most of these walleyes will come out at nighttime to spawn and by the daytime, they're kind of just hanging probably just outside of the creek waiting to come up. Yeah, is that you got, you got what is the fish are up in the, in the lake waiting to come up the wind for the right time of year, right temperatures, and they're gonna head up what is this is called Falcon Creek, and they'll head up. There's not a lot of spawning habitat on this creek, so this makes this basically an ideal situation. Yeah. What 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 size are you keeping for eggs? About this size. Yeah. <laughs> so we've been averaging. Uh, we just calculated yesterday we're getting about 70,000 eggs per fish on average. 70,000? What what percentage in the wild do you think would actually uh, be successful? Do you have any idea? They say around 1%. 1%. Yeah, I mean it could be higher in different lakes with optimum spawning habitat. It could be lower. Yeah. But around 1 and we're averaging a little over 80% survival. Wow. And is that, that's, yeah, so here's a nice fish. That's 1% Nice. Yeah, 1% of the eggs laid. Now, we're only taking part of this run out. Yeah. We're only taking eggs from till we're full. This run is huge. It could have two, 3,000 fish in it. We're taking eggs out of 200. Wow. All right, now some, now, now pop quiz. So what's, what's the ideal spawning temperature? When, when's the magic number for you guys to set the net here and start? It's basically time of year. What I've seen is photo period, May 1st, within five days of May 1st. So, I mean, I've heard that, it, you know, it being a warm spring or cold spring makes less of a factor than the days getting longer. Like, like you're saying, the photo period is more photo important than actually to make the most difference. Yeah. They're going to go May 1st. It doesn't matter what. Yeah. Now, when you get temperatures that are higher, your viability is less because at a, at 13 degrees Celsius, the sperm is no, no longer modal. Yeah. So it can't really fertilize eggs. And then you get things like low water years, like this year, fish just can't make it up to the spawning. Yeah. Place. So that's what you call a year class. Like you're going to have a very poor year class this year. Huh. Because the water's low. So high water typically is more flow, brings more fish in. years to get your best year class. Interesting. These are fresh fish? These are fresh fish. We don't know what's in here yet, but. We're gonna find out. I know there's at least four pike. So, we, do, are, are the pike normally spawning before or after the walleye? Before and during fall. So when when does a walleye reach sexual maturity? I think it's around five. Could be here. It's gonna be a little bit older. You get something like Lake Lake Winnipeg. It could be two to three. I mean. They also don't live as long. They're, they're fairly long live in these shield lakes. You know, we've 
aged some fish here that were up to 28 years old and that's only a 12 pound fish. Wow, 28 year old, so that's a what, a 28 to 30 inch fish sort of? Yeah, exactly. People don't realize, yeah, that's crazy when you keep a fish that big, it's like. Yeah. And that's in the shield lakes. Like if you're gonna go more eutrophic lakes like Lake Winnipeg, yeah. that same fish could be seven or eight. All right, Trevor, so you're squeezing the eggs out? You betcha, yeah. It's my job here. Squeezing eggs since 99. <laughs> Is that how long you've been doing the study? <laughs> yeah, and it's been going on since what, the mid 80s? Really? 1984. Yeah, we had a pit claw, we had a pit egg. We originally got time to re pit egg with a, with a spear. But we did re yeah, check out the belly on that now. Uh, it's about a 24. Yeah, wow. Yeah, I think we need some males in here. Okay, I'm gonna give you these. You got those. So now this is where the magic will happen. Now you're mixing it together? Yeah, get some of this in there. So what's the ratio for milk versus eggs? Well, they say just a dab will do ya. <laughs> so we put in about 100 mils. <laughs> it really doesn't take too much. We, we usually put in five or six into a batch. And so now once you've once you've mixed them up, how long is the incubation period? Until they hatch? Yeah. yeah. I don't know if that's the right term or not. But yeah, about three weeks. Yeah. The hatchery, yeah. So you'll keep them at the hatchery until they hatch and then and then they'll get distributed amongst lakes? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much that same day. What are you adding in there? Just lake water? Just lake water, yeah. So those eggs absorb water as they're Fertilized. Yeah, fertilization takes about maybe 90 seconds. Really? And at that point, the micropile closes after the sperm. Fertilization is done. And then they start picking up water. So they're going to, if he just left it and we didn't move it over, that pound would overflow. Hmm. It'll absorb all the water. Like rice. And they're adhesive. So yeah. in nature, if they're spawning on a gravel bed, they'd stick, yeah. They stick. So that's our job is to keep them from sticking. What's what's the biggest wall you've ever pulled out of here in the nets? Fifteen and a half pounds. Wow. 30, yeah, 35, 36 inch. Really? That's a nice big pike. So many suckers, oh my goodness. <laughs> what do you crazy. think? Isn't that wild? So my lens wild. is getting wet. Right there. One second, that's perfect. Nice. So since 99, what are, I mean, what are some of the more interesting take home facts from this whole process that you could, that a fisherman would find interesting maybe? Well, I think just the coolest thing is that the, for this to actually happen in nature, yeah, is at that 1% and we're doing this and getting like up to 90% success. success. Wow. Well, thank you guys so much for letting me document this. I think the moral of the story is you got to release those big fish because they have a ton of eggs. So these, these fish will now be hatched at the hatchery and distributed all over Manitoba? You bet, yeah. Very cool. What's going on now? We're doing, we're doing the fish tagging? Yeah, so we are tagging three more thousand dollar Falcon Lake pike. Were, were any of those fish caught last year that we tagged? Or like, did a couple tagged fish get brought in? So, yeah, one, uh, one tagged pike last year was uh, caught and paid out in late August. Actually, there was another one caught over the winter. Uh, none of the bass that we tagged together were caught. Oh, really? Um, and in fact, since 2017, we have tagged uh, a total of 12 bass. We've tagged 12 bass and yep. none of them have been caught. Wow. A few of them have been spotted. Yeah. But uh, no one's been able to catch one. So that's... There's a lot of money swimming around. There's a lot of money swimming around. Um, at the end of this year, we will have put 30 tags into fish on Falcon Lake worth at least a thousand bucks a piece which w with one worth five thousand bucks obviously you know not all of those are still swimming around and we've paid out uh five over the years very thousand cool bucks a pop so we're taking pike we're taking three pike is that the plan taking three pike nice yeah so again you want to you can kind of help us pick here you got you got a few to choose from 
I, I mean, whichever one's uh, that one looks nice. That one looks good. Yeah, I, I want nice, healthy ones that are gonna survive. Okay, so for, I'm just gonna get a length on it first. And that's a 29 inch. Perfect. Okay, let's just put it back into the net. Okay. This is tag number 25. Can I take can I take that fish, please? <laughs> <laughs> There's another thousand dollar tagged pike in Falcon Lake. We're gonna release this since she's spawning and she can go upstream, do her thing. This one's a 27. Oh sorry, this is tag number 26, yeah. Tag number 26 is a 27 inch Falcon Lake tag pike, another thousand dollar fish. Come out to Falcon Lake, try and catch one of these things. All right, Sam, you're releasing the next one. You're doing this. Oh yeah, that one's good. This one's good. This is 29 and a half inch. That's a nice one. Oh yeah. All right, Sam, show me your pike. There's the tag, what number we got? 27, I'm assuming. 27, nice. All right. This is the lucky one. Yep, Sam's Pike. Hopefully to be caught by a very lucky angler. Be free. Nice. How do we enter the fishing contest? All right, so this is the new 2021 Falcon Lake tagged fish contest ticket. You can buy them at the Faloma Beach Marina at the Falcon Lake Marina, at the Falcon Lake Shell Station. This year, because of COVID, we're gonna do something a little bit different. Uh, we are also offering uh, registration online so that you don't have to go into a store, don't have to you know, have contact. Um, you're not gonna get a ticket, but uh, you will be registered and you know there will be a, a timestamp so we know when you're registered online so you will be qualified for these thousand dollar and even five thousand dollar fish that are swimming around in falcon lake you got to keep the tag though if you catch the fish you got to cut it off the fish yeah I, what, <laughs> what we want is a picture of you holding the fish showing the tag hanging out the back of it and then remove the tag either pull it out with pliers or cut it off and bring it to me at the Faloma beach marina and uh as long as you're registered for the event before you've caught that fish, yeah, that's key. then you're eligible for those thousand dollar prizes. Awesome. Well, uh, this video is not completely done. I wanna talk a little more about what'll happen there, but if you are fishing in the white shell, uh, you may as well spend some time on Falcon, go stop by Floma Marina and uh, buy yourself some catch and cook. I heard they're getting some and uh, buy yourself a ticket to the, uh, to the contest and win some money if you're gonna be fishing anyways. All right guys, we are back in the office. That was so cool. Huge shout out to Ian for setting that up and all the fisheries people that let me invade in what they were doing and, and film. Cause that, that is, that's so neat. I love, I love understanding why the fish are there, what they're doing. As they mentioned, as far as, you know, optimal spawning water temperature and time of year, they said for Falcon specifically, they said five days before, five days after May 1st, around that mark was kind of ideal time. And as far as the water temperature goes, they said seven degrees Celsius, which converts to 44.6 degrees Fahrenheit. That was optimal for spawning. They collected 13.5 million eggs, which, meant based on I think 197 females they took eggs from, it was 75,000 eggs per female. That is wild, okay? So this this was said earlier in the video and I'm repeating myself, but if those fish were to naturally do their thing in the wild, only 1% of the, the milt, the, the male sperm and the eggs would actually fertilize. When they do it themselves, they said 80 to 90% success rate on fertilization. So that doesn't actually mean the fish surviving the wild, that's just them being fertilized. Then they hatch them in the hatchery and then they'll go and stock lakes all over Manitoba. Of those, of those you know, hatchlings that they stock, they said it's really tough to predict how many actually survive. They said maybe in that 3% range, but I mean, just them doing this and being able to stock all those lakes, it, it just gives you such a better shot of the fish even hatching. And then beyond that, I mean, nature, nature does its thing. Um, they said something that changes um, the viability of the fertilization, especially in the wild, is, is the temperature. So even though 
you know, temperature throughout a year might not make too much difference on the time that they spawn. It will make differences on the, the how successful the fertilization process is. And then it, not every lake is gonna act the same. This being a shield lake, Falcon Lake, which is right on the Manitoba, Ontario border. It's a deep lake and it's not super fertile. It's not like Lake Manitoba, Lake Winnipeg, where those, where those fish reach sexual maturity very quickly, grow really fast, really big. These shield lakes, the fish typically grow a lot smaller. They said that they had 28 year old walleyes there were four pounds in the past. There obviously are bigger ones too, but that's an old fish. And I think something that's so important to remember is you gotta release those fish. People won't realize that a walleye can be 30 years old. So those bigger ones are the ones you wanna release because those are the ones that are, you know, laying a lot of eggs. If you're gonna keep fish, keep the smaller ones. That's why they created a slot size in Eastern Manitoba. That's pretty much all I got for cool facts. It was just so neat to see what was going on and to see what, what the province of Manitoba is doing. How does this help you as a fisherman? You know, it's good to identify where those spawning fish are. They do spawn at night typically. And um, if it does so happen that you're fishing in a time frame where those fish are still spawning, I mean, try to release, release the fish if you think you're targeting spawning fish. But also, you know, for example, if a lot of fish are spawning in that creek, during the daytime, they'll probably be pulled out somewhere in front of the creek. And also when season opens, they might be near those spawning areas. So if there's a spawning creek or a bay, a stretch of shoreline you're convinced on, you know, maybe fish the point just outside of it or, you know, the flat adjacent to those spawning areas. So all things, the better you understand fish, the better you understand water temps and all the biology behind it, it'll make you better understand where the fish are gonna be and how to catch them. Whew, that was a lot of talking guys. Check out the fish contest if you're gonna be fishing Falcon Lake this summer. That's all I gotta say. Thank you guys for watching and we will catch you on the water very soon because walleye season is opening in a couple days.